Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. All right, now the other concept, and it's related to this, is the unearned interest. So if a loan is paid off early, the amount by which the original finance charge is reduced is called the unearned interest. <clears throat> there are two common methods of calculating unearned interest, the actuarial method and the rule of 78. I'm only going to have the actuarial method on the test. Okay, sometimes the borrower, based on the contract, might not get all of the unearned interest back. There might be some kind of early payment penalty. So you gotta pay attention to your contract. All right, so here's uh, what we need to know for the actuarial method of calculating the unearned interest. <coughs> For a closed-in loan requiring monthly payments, has to be monthly payments, which is paid off earlier than the originally scheduled loan, we're going to say that capital R is the amount of our regular monthly payment. So for example, if you're paying $150 a month, that would be R. K is going to represent the remaining number of scheduled payments after the current payment. So let's say that you are uh, originally scheduled to make a year's worth of payments, 12 months, but you decide to pay it off after nine months, then what would K be? So your original loan was 12 months, you're paying off early in the ninth month then what's the remaining number of scheduled payments? Three, right? Twelve minus the nine. Okay, so the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth payments are the ones that are remaining. So there would be three, so K would be three. H is this finance charge per hundred dollars that we've already talked about, corresponding to a loan with the same APR and K monthly payments. So notice that the H we're talking about here would not have been the H, the original H for the whole loan. It's as if you borrowed um, the remaining money for the last few payments. How much interest would that have been? That's what you're going to get back. And so the formula for unearned interest is U, unearned interest, equals K, the remaining number of scheduled payments, times R, the, the amount for a regular monthly payment, times H divided by 100 plus H. Again, this is one of those formulas that's in the end of the chapter <clears throat> that you can refer to during your testing. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So make a note of what those values mean. All right, so here's an example. Suppose you have a loan for four years with monthly payments of $185 and an APR of 9%. Now we probably could have figured this out on our own, but they're going ahead and telling us original finance charge, if we had kept the loan for the full four years, would have turned out to be $1,426. So if you decide to pay it off in three years rather than four years, then A, we're gonna calculate the unearned interest, and B, we're gonna calculate something else called the payoff amount, which is like the last payment, how much you have to pay. <clears throat> All right, so solution. A, we're going to use the formula U equals K times R times H over 100 plus H. I always like to start by writing that formula down because it reminds me of what values I'm going to need and it guides me through the process. Think of this formula as a process, right? So you're going to have to find K, you're going to have to find R, you're going to have to find H. 
And it depends on what kind of information they're giving you. Sometimes they give it to you directly, sometimes you have a little work to do, but at least you know what your goal is. So write down that formula. And then um, let's see what we already know here. Is there anything that we can figure out right away? Out of, out of K and R and H, did they give us any of those? They gave us R, right? Because what did R represent? Monthly payment. What's the monthly payment in this case? 185. Good. Okay, so at least we know R. All right, now we also can find H because what do we need to use? What do we need to have in order to find H from that table? So let's look at the table and remember what we need in order to find H, right? In order to find H, which is all these numbers in the middle and light blue on the table, we need to know the number of payments, which is on the left, and we need to know the percentage rate along the top. So the information they gave us, how many payments are we going to have? And remember, for unearned interest, the payments remaining is what we use. So how many payments are remaining if we had a loan for four years and we pay it off in three? Twelve. We have a whole year worth of payments left. So we have 12 payments left, so we're going to use that. And then we have 9% APR. Okay, so going back here, if you have... 12 payments left. Here's 12. We're going to look here. And we have this time they're telling us the APR and we're using that to figure out H. So 9% APR corresponds to H being $4.94. Okay, so from the APR table using the 12 payments left, we find that H is 494. So we have R and we have H. And what else do we need? What was K again? It's the remaining number of payments, isn't it? So we already know that too. That's 12. So now it's just a matter of plugging in these values into our formula. Okay? Now, you want to practice this, and you want to practice these formulas, which are only going to get more complicated throughout this chapter. You want to practice these on the calculator that you're going to use when you go to the testing center. I know that they do have TI-30X2S. You can check and see what other calculator, if they have the calculator that you're using or not. If they don't, then you can borrow one of these from me if you want to. I have a bunch of them. Or you can check out a calculator from the library as well. And I think the math department has some calculators you can check out too. But just use the calculator that for your homework that you're going to use on the test to practice. <clears throat> All right, so plug in those values to that formula and tell me what you get. It should be $104.51. Yeah. They have a T. They have lots of T. They have this kind. They have other kinds too, but they have a lot of these. So for sure, you'll they'll have TI30X2S for sure. If you use this one, you won't go wrong. I promise. Yes. Okay. Who can answer that? How do we get K is 12? The remaining months, that's right. So how many months were originally scheduled? 40. 48 months originally, but we paid it off in 36 months. So K is equal to 48 minus 36 equals 12. Okay? But I really want you to practice plugging this into your calculator because I would not be surprised if due to order of operations, you get a wrong answer. So plug it in. If you have your calculator with you, please get it out. Plug it in and see if you get the right answer yeah, right I now. Answer. You got the wrong answer, right? Mm -hmm. It happens a lot. So 
What I always say is when you have a fraction, put any operations that are within one side of the fraction in parentheses just to be sure. So in this case, you can type into your calculator 12 times one, well, let me just erase that parenthesis because we don't need, oops. <laughs> Don't need a parenthesis. You need 12 times, and then you need 185 times, and then you're going to have, it's actually okay in this case not to put the, the parentheses around the whole fraction, but just to be safe, you probably should just go ahead and put up. So you have parentheses 4.94 divided by then the denominator, 100 plus 4.94. Or you can just add that together mentally, right? Because this operation here is always easy. You could just immediately write it as 104.94. And then you wouldn't have to worry with that extra set of parentheses. So you could do 12 times 185 times 4.94 divided by 104.94. And let me see if I get the same thing. 12 times 185 didn't work. Times 4.94 divided by 104.94. Yeah, I got it. 104.51. Yeah, now I got it. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody having trouble with their calculator? is important guys yeah because you did the right order of operations but you did it manually mm -hmm. you can do that as well okay all right so this is how you calculate unearned interest using the actuarial method all right now Let's talk about, they wanted us in part B to find the payoff amount, but we had not yet defined what payoff amount is. So now let's talk about payoff amount. So if a closed end loan requiring regular monthly payments are, can be paid off early along with the current payment. If the original loan had K additional payments scheduled after the current, again, that K is always after the current payment and the unearned interest is you, then disregarding any possible prepayment penalty, the payoff amount is given by the quantity K plus one times R minus U. This is a formula people very frequently uh, <coughs> do the wrong order of operations on. Remember, this is multiplication. And so that always comes before subtraction, order of operations. Okay, so all this really represents though, let's say that uh, you have your current payment, which is R, but then you also have K more. So multiply K plus one times R and you figure out how much your payments would have been, but then you just subtract from that the unearned interest, the amount that they owe you um, since you're paying off early. All right, so let's do part B of that same problem. So we're looking for the payoff amount. We have K, we have R, and we have U now. So we just plug in. So that's going to be the 12 K is 12 plus 1, so 13 times 185 minus the unearned interest, which we determined to be 104.51. You can always do this part in your head, so that's less to plug into the calculator. So just say 13 times 185, and then subtract 104.51, and what does that turn out to be? It's going to be, what, 23... $2,300.49? Yeah. The one? So remember how um, K is the number of payments you have left after the current payment? 
So there's 12 payments left after the one you're making today. So there's actually 13 payments left. You have to add one to the K. That's, so that one comes from the context of the problem. It's in the formula. It's always a one there. Okay, so I pulled this example from my math lab. I'd like you guys to work on it in groups. So we're gonna get into groups of three or four students. Here's the question. The loan below was paid in full before its due date. A, obtain the value of H from the APR table. Then B, use the actuarial method to find the amount of unearned interest. And C, find the payoff amount. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on the lights and you go ahead and get in your groups. Don't try to copy it down. You're going to have to look at the screen anyway because you're going to need this table. So just get into your groups. I am going to pause this. Because that means that we messed up something all the way up here. Okay, so. Let's turn around and talk about this, and this will be the last thing we'll be done for today. All right, so again, we, um, in part A, we're asked to obtain the value of H from the annual percentage rate table. So in order to find H, we need to have N and the APR, right? But this N, when we're talking about an unearned interest, is actually K when we're doing unearned interest because because the they're not going to give you interest back for those years that you you know had the loan was active they're only going to give you interest back for the remaining part so it's actually k but they're giving us k k is 24 and we have the apr 9.5 so we're going to go over to 9.5 and we're going to look across the uh 24 row here until we get to that column. So 10.19 is our <coughs> our um, H finance um, finance charge per hundred dollars of amount finance. Okay, and then for part B, it says use the actuarial method to find the amount of unearned interest. All that means is that you're using the formula U equals K times R times H over 100 plus H. Okay, so in this case, we would have 24 times, the monthly payment is 349.04 mm -hmm. times H, which is 10.19. And I'm not even gonna bother writing 100 plus that. I'm just gonna write 110.19. Alright, so putting that into my calculator, 24 times 349.04 times 10.19 divided by 110.19 is going to be approximately $774.67. Alright, so that was part B, the unearned interest. And then for part C, they just want us to find the payoff amount. Remember, I'll call that payoff amount. That's going to be K plus 1, right, because there are 24 payments left after the current payment. That means that including the current payment, there's 25, times R minus the in interest we're getting back. So that's going to be 25 times 349.04 minus the 774.67 that we just calculated. Multiplication comes first. So 25 times 349.04 is minus 774.67. So it looks like that's going to be $7,951.33. Is that what you got? Yes. Yeah, give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. All right, so 
your plan for the week. If you have not done 13.1 and 13.2 homework for whatever reason, you need to seek out resources that will allow you to do that because you are officially behind. 13.3 homework you should be starting on. Also, we have videos for the second half of 13.2 which is where you use a formula to calculate H instead of the APR table. Then everything else is the same. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.